Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning, I just woke up myself. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys kind of with the day 1 and 2 Righteous Fire SSF Chieftain. So if you guys are unaware, I restarted an SSF uh, yesterday, I think it was, or the day, sorry, the day before yesterday. I haven't really done too much on the character, um, so we're only up to like tier, I don't know, like 6, 5, 6 maps or so. So far, defenses feel okay on the character as I expected. I think the damage intake will start to get scary around yellow slash red maps, which we'll figure out what we're doing for that. Um, so far, the skill tree looks very similar to my juggernaut tree. Um, main reason being is we still need all the standard stuff. We need life regen. We want armor for now. We need auras, right, just in general. So the tree looks extremely similar. You'll notice I have two tattoos here. These are just flat life regen tattoos. Um, yeah, overall, if I had to explain how the character feels, squishier than a jug, worse than an inquisitor in every way. <laughs> With that being said, though, hold on, I will explain one thing. There's a little bit of uniqueness to the chieftain going on, so you'll notice I'm currently running Purity of Fire, and the reasoning for the Purity of Fire is because of this ascendancy node right here, Sallow Cleansing Water. This makes it so that when I run Purity of Fire, I also gain Elirez like Purity of Elements, right? So this is very, very important along with the Fire Res stacking. So that's why we take this. Next up would be Velaco Storm Embrace, which helps us get our max res. Now my max res is extremely low right now because we're in very budget gearing. Um, I can see myself easily hitting 90 max res, and we'll talk more about this in the future. Uh, but for now, this number will skyrocket up. Just as an example, when my Purity of Fire here hits level 20, that'll go up an extra one, and then when I can get it to 23, it'll go up an extra one, and then I can scale Aura Effect, and it will just kind of snowball. So that's pretty cool. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm not my my build probably is very weak right now because I'm running the term because I want to stay good on armor. Although I could probably drop it, but I'd be a lot more squishy. But I'm not running malevolence yet. So the goal is because we are a chieftain and we can get so much fire res, which naturally like splashes over to our other resistances. My goal is to get two double uh, reduced effective shock rings, um, and that way we can basically be shock immune without having to worry about running Tempest Shield, that gives us extra aura room back so I can run Determination, Malevolence, um, Purity of Fire, and then I believe Anointing Charisma would help get us uh, Skitterbot. So that's kind of where we're trying to go. My gear is like really bad right now. Actually, in fact, I need to put, I have the Fire and Ignite chance. The Ignite is very important for the Explode. But yeah, I'll just go over and kind of splash in my gear. This is actually not bad. This is a good emulet I found that has a, uh, Minimum endurance, so that's pretty cool. My plan is to craft the fire and chaos on basically everything. Um, so that's pretty much what we're gonna try to do. That'll help get the chaos res up as well. We got these boots, which is pretty funny. They dropped off of like one of the warbands encounters. I literally like augmented life regen and then regal 30% movement speed. So because of that, we got to drop Arctic Armor and run determination. So that was pretty cool. Yep, all the links are pretty much still the same, so I'm not really gonna cover them. The only thing different is I'm using Punishment instead of Flammability. And the primary reason for that is because of Aramico's Sunlight for the minus 20 wall stationary. Alright, uh, I'm just going to go run like one of my highest tier maps here. Expect it to be a very bland and slow showcase. Actually, I didn't even read the map mods. Maybe I should please tell me it didn't have extra chaos. It didn't have extra chaos, right? Oh, oh okay, it's reduced damage from crits. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you'll notice that I'm not currently running a life flask, and the reason I'm not running a life flask is just because I have the need for speed and I want this onslaught flask. That is literally the only reason. I think the boss is here. Now this boss, oh. Okay, yeah, so there's that thing with Chieftain that can happen where basically the explode from Chieftain does so much damage, it's a little bit unethical. Literally just casually one-shots map bosses, so, um... I definitely think I'm gonna look towards getting a Vol Breach, uh, so that we can do that on some more map bosses and maybe Guardians in the future. So, talking more about this Explode node. Uh, originally, when first teased on this Explode node, it looked shit. Why? Because the chance for it to proc is abysmal. With further testing, 
the chance to proc is still abysmal. However, the base AoE on the explosion is huge. Like, actually monstrous. So I think that it's okay that it's only a 5% because when you're doing higher tier juiced content, like say you're doing a Grand Design Atlas where you have 40 to 60% pack size on your tree or you're putting Delirium on or say you want to farm Blight. You know, things like that I think would work really, really well with this character. Um, I, I think really utilizing the Explode node is the best thing you can do to utilize Chieftain right now. Explode in his max res. My region is real bad right now. You'll notice I'm also not running Vitality. The choice to not run Vitality is pretty simple. I'm not a Jug, so I struggle to mitigate physical like a Jug. So I didn't want to like sacrifice 500 of my HP for some region. I don't really think it's going to end up being a good trade-off for me. I might also just replace Infernal Cry with Enduring Cry, um, just like as a pseudo life flask. Yep, that's pretty much about it. So from here on out, we're pretty much just climbing the Atlas. Our goal is to replace our body armor with what's known as a Lightning Coil. Uh, the Lightning Coil giving the 50% physical damage taken as fire makes me, or as lightning, makes me wonder if I could potentially drop Determination. Although that sounds really sketchy, but 50% physical conversion when you're at like 90% max res is pretty solid. I could even further back this up by dropping my shield for a Dawnbreaker and then really committing to more offensive auras, right? Normally when you think about it, if you're if you're using like a lightning coil, that's no Eldritch Implicits, but technically the Eldritch Implicits don't really give you damage. If you're using a Dawnbreaker, you're not using like a plus one fire shield. But technically Dawnbreaker gives huge armor and gives physical conversion uh, to fire, which is very good defensively. So a mid-roll Dawnbreaker is like 10 to 15%, I think. And then lightning coil is 50, that's 65% conversion. I could see myself hitting 10,000 armor easily without determination, right? So that's potentially more, maybe 15k, maybe even like, maybe close to 20,000 with my flasks on. So 20,000 armor with 65% conversion and a minimum endurance charge sounds really, really good to be honest. So we'll see. Chieftain's looking a little bit brighter at now, I'm that, now that I'm actually playing it, but you know, only time will tell. Um, as for the Atlas, we're going to be farming Expedition. I took the big Expedition Boom node. This will help bring some wealth into my SSF playthrough. And now I'm actually full memeing and going Kirak. And we're going to see uh, what I can do with Kirak missions. I've never done like full Kirak SSF start, so that's pretty exciting. And also Shrines. Shrines are just really juicy with Chieftain because you fly into the Shrine and the whole Shrine explodes. So anyway, that's pretty much about it. So. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I think the cats outside are going crazy. Uh, just real quick tool tips so you guys can check. We only have 78k on the Righteous Fire, and we are rocking uh, 70k on Fire Trap. So really, really low numbers. Anyway, catch you guys all later. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day but Sundays at twitch.tv slash pox. See you guys all tomorrow.